Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, a lot of people have been asking about uh, what's included in the uh, Stop Motion Level 1 course, and so I thought I'd uh, just give a little uh, tour of the uh, all the lessons and uh, what you uh, can expect of the course. Let's take a look at the first lesson. It uh, It's really an introduction into um, the animation principles, uh, so thing, you know some basic things like timing and spacing and what the differences are between those um, and so we kind of cover those in generally but also how they apply to stop motion and so then we go into your setup and that's a big deal for in stop motion that all the other forms of animation doesn't have to don't have to really deal with is that we're physical so what you're shooting on your space your camera your lights that's something that we cover and we talk about because you can use it a lot of different ways and uh, you can make it happen in lots of different tools so um, no no setup is perfect, and we don't expect you to have what we have. So we kind of what we do is in one of the assignments is we look for your pictures of your setup, our video of what you have going on, so we can kind of give you feedback on that. Each class also uh, has some sometimes some supporting content, so some uh, other uh, links and blog posts and things like that that can help you out. Uh, on each page is where you'll is upload. All your assignments as well um, so we just have an uploader there and you also get a checklist for each one of uh, the classes or the lessons so this is really just what to just sort of keep you on track of what all the assignments are going to be and uh, just another visual aid to help you out and uh, some of the classes also have a, um, a PDF additional thing and so in this case it has the um, uh, before you animate checklist and uh, that's just another checklist just to sort of keep your reminder on uh, what are the things you need to have ready and a lot of the lessons also have suggested reading and uh, viewing so in this case is the classic book by Richard Williams and we always look for feedback on uh, all of the assignments as well so that's for lesson one lesson two is about frame rates now frame rates is something that uh, in other forms of animation you know, sometimes they deal with it, sometimes they don't. Uh, in stop motion, it can come up more often than you can uh, than than you imagine. Um, and sometimes using multiple frame rates at the same time. So, for example, your shot is in a 24 frame comp, but you don't need to animate 24 frames sometimes. And sometimes you animate in 12. So it's a bit of a mind uh, gymnastics to sort of wrap your head around that. So we, ex we describe in full detail what the differences are, what frame rates are, and how you can use them. And again, here you go. So we have some reference that you can, in this case, has some video animation reference that you can use uh, to help you out while you're animating. Um, and a lot of people find that really useful. Next up is lesson three. And uh, so now we're starting to get into some of the, the nuances of, of movements and uh, that sort of thing. So we're going beyond just easing ins and outs. We're starting to talk about arcs. And arcs are not just uh, as simple as a you know moving a hand. Sometimes arcs are the where your chin is moving and where the position of the shoulders are, are moving in relation to other things. So the arcs can be very complex and they have a lot of, they're related in a lot of parts. And we start to use the puppet um, at this point and uh, that's really fun to start to take the the arcs from a tabletop point of view of looking down on your set and now we're starting to bring it into a regular camera setup and animating your puppet and how you can apply those same principles now into a puppet. We also talk about the camera settings because camera settings are pretty important in stop motion and knowing them is how you can start to get the real effects that you want. You, do you want everything in focus? Do you want a shallow depth of field? What is a depth of field? We go into all of those sort of things into uh, the class and how you can play around with, with your shutter speed and your aperture um, because those can get really, really important. Next is the staging and posing. So this is a big puppet uh, uh, lesson. So here we're going to start talking about taking your puppet. What can it do? What, what, what can, how can you clearly demonstrate the positions that you, your, your character needs to to act and, and to describe or, or uh, what does the scene require and can your puppet actually do it and uh, then we start dealing with pop throughs. Pop throughs are like rehearsals, this is a term, I don't know where it came from, but this is where you start to stage out and start to, pull, start to figure out, alright, what does your puppet have to do, when does it have to do it 
and you time it out in your animation and that guides your real animation shot. Lesson five. Now we get into the classic bouncing ball assignment and we deal with weight. The classic tennis ball bouncing and then we try a bowling ball and then compare the difference in how your spacing and your and your um, uh, spacing of your frames how much they play a role in conveying the weight. It's the same object but between the two animations you know that there's a totally different weight between those. So we'll teach you how to achieve that and how then you can start to apply those into you know, not just a you know regular example like this, but now into a character or into heavier objects or lighter objects. Lesson six: anticipation, action, reaction. All right, so this is now we're taking your character and we're starting to the beginnings of a story, and the beginnings of okay, it's not just one simple action in here. Your character has to do a few things in usually in a scene. And so we talk about overlapping action and we talk a little bit about secondary action and how those can really bump up the quality of your work um, outside of just making things move. Now you're starting to feel, oh, now you maybe start to see that there's some thinking going on in your character or that they have hesitation or they're really anxious for something. So now we started conveying some emotion into to our animation from what we are gaining from the posing in the in the previous examples. And then we also talk about what's some of the rigs. Rigs are uh, things that hold your puppet up, either to defy gravity or just because it's too big or you need it to help you with your animation. Uh, and using the right rigs, there's lots of different ways of doing it. So we kind of talk, talk about a few different ways of, of achieving them. And uh, yeah, how you can use them in the future because rigs will always be in your life with stop motion. Lesson seven, the waving line and rhythm. So this one, we're, we're talking about another classic example about just this kind of waving line and how you can not just to you know, learn how to animate it, but then how that applies that the waving line, it starts to imply wind, it starts to imply uh, maybe a snake and control with things. And what are the differences between those? Um, then we start dealing with bird flapping and the kind of all the other kind of other uh, flaps and waving lines like a like a whip snap and these sort of things are very simple exercises but they tend to come up in really uh, surprising ways when you start to animate and so getting getting these the, these fundamentals down in this one really pays off in in later assignments too and uh, then we start talking about like what's rhythm and how and rhythm is a bit it's a bit ephemeral it's it's tough to describe when things have it and when things don't and so we we uh talk about how that you can apply that into your animation and then we start to we do a little break dancing of of your character and uh, apply the waving line into a into a puppet as well and finally lesson eight and we talk about um, our particular stop motion process. Now everybody is going to have a different process. Um, this is our process of how we, we go about our projects. And so hopefully it lends you to develop your own. Um, it, it's really fascinating to hear how people to, to go through that process. And even when Sylvia and I were developing this class, it was really fascinating to hear each other and be like, well, I never really thought about that, but this is the way I do it. And uh, how we could kind of combine our two our two minds into uh, how we animate. And uh, so this really goes from the beginning um, of, of the concept of an, of an idea into a rehearsal for, so we do a little bit of a, a lav, a live action video of, of recording ourselves, acting it out. And you, after you go through your lav, you, you do your pop through and you start to stage out what your scene needs to be and you make your adjustments. And so this goes into Sylvie's thinking process on how she she goes about a shot and how she revises it while she's working and that all leads to the final shot and how she she goes about it so it's really a fascinating uh, way to go about and looking at everything and so then after all this is done there's also the 45 minute video call with us that you'll get so uh, we intend it to be at the end of the course so we can all kind of have a wrap up and talk about where you want to go in your career but if you feel like you want to bring it up and talk about it earlier go right ahead and so there's an there's an option on the website to uh, book that and reserve your time with us so yeah hopefully that uh, gave you a good kind of clear idea of what uh, the lessons are like in the course and um, 
if you're you want to know more about the feedback videos uh, there's a separate uh, clip on that where I show a few examples of the feedback that you're receiving on your assignments so uh, if you have any other questions send us a line at uh, clearn.com take care bye Thank you.